What's up friends, my name is Pi and welcome to SLR Lounge. Look, I don't wanna waste your guys' time, I just wanna give you all a sneak peek into the SLR Lounge Premium Educational Library. This video specifically comes from Creative Photography 101. It's our latest course designed to teach you how to shoot pro images with just a phone. If y'all enjoy the video, check out the links below and let's go ahead and dive straight in. I wanna spend a moment and just walk through some of the different tricks and accessories that we're gonna be using throughout the course. Now here's the thing, I'm gonna be explaining everything in complete detail as we get to those places, but if you're a little bit familiar with why we're doing something, it's gonna help you to absorb it the very first time that you go through. Let's start from the top and discuss the exposure triangle. Now the exposure triangle is a concept that we go in depth into in Photography 101. That's when you really step into a mirrorless or into a DSLR camera and you wanna master how it works. But that being said, the exposure triangle still applies to your smartphone, although it's in a slightly different way. We essentially have less control over it. Now let me explain what it is. Your exposure or the level of brightness of an image is determined by three things. One of them is your shutter speed. This is how quick the shutter is opening and closing, and that determines the amount of light that's gonna be coming through, or the amount of time that the sensor is gonna be exposed to light. So this is shutter speed. We use it to control essentially the speed or motion in a shot. So when we wanna show motion, we slow down the shutter speed. When we wanna freeze motion, we speed it up. Only from the phone, and at least from the native app, we don't have control over shutter speed. It's gonna choose for us. Same thing with aperture and same thing with ISO. The aperture is the eye or the pupil of a lens, okay? So I should say probably, is it the pupil or the iris? Nope, it's the pupil. I was gonna say the iris, but that's the colorful part. Mike's sitting over here, in case you're wondering who I'm looking at right now. Say hi, Mike. Hi. It's an off-camera hello. So look, the aperture is that pupil, which when it opens up, it's gonna let more light in. When it closes down, it's gonna let less light in. What this controls is essentially depth on a camera, right? So if we want the background to be blurred out, we would open the aperture. If we want the background to be sharp, we would close the aperture. Now, once again, on a smartphone, this works a little bit differently because the apertures on these lenses, they're fixed, and what you get in terms of control, it's all software-based. We're gonna discuss how to control and how to blur and how to do all those things, but it's gonna be a software-based control. So once again, we're not gonna be really manually controlling the aperture on the phone. We'll get to that in Photography 101. Same thing with ISO, that's the last piece of the exposure triangle, and all it means is in bright, everyday conditions, your ISO is gonna be lower. In darker conditions, the camera is gonna raise the ISO. You can think of ISO like kind of a, a digital gain on something, like where you turn the volume up. So if you don't have enough light, you can essentially turn the volume up to artificially get the phone to be more sensitive, to get the camera to be more sensitive, to brighten the scene. The trade-off to this is in low light, whenever you raise the ISO, you're gonna introduce grain, you're gonna introduce noise, and your overall level of image quality drops. So the colors aren't as good, everything, is kind of gonna be compromised when you're in darker environments. So really when it comes to the phone, well, while a regular camera does really great in low light conditions, the phone is gonna struggle a little bit, at least current generations. As it gets into more advanced phones, it's gonna get better and better. But we wanna try to help the phone out as much as we possibly can. Now once again, all of these things are controlled by the phone, but it's still worth knowing kind of what the phone is doing. When we adjust the exposure to be brighter or darker, the camera is making all of these decisions for us, or I should say the phone is making all these decisions for us. When you get to a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, all those decisions are gonna be ones that you make manually, okay? So that's kind of a, a brief glimpse into the exposure triangle. Now let's talk about this. In many instances, you're gonna see me rotating the phone. Sometimes I'm rotating against a wall, sometimes I'm flipping it upside down. Why are we doing this? Well, this all has to do with where the lenses are placed on your phone. See, the lenses are in the corner of the phone. And by rotating it, we can bring those lenses closer to objects to be able to see a different field of view, to be able to create kind of a better foreground with more depth, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna draw a field of view line 
coming out from this little spot. And I'll exaggerate a little bit just so there's more lines and more things to kind of visually see, okay? And where this ends, I'm gonna place the phone. I'm gonna go ahead and record on the phone so you guys can see exactly what the phone is seeing. And by the way, if you ever wonder how to do this, you just swipe from the top right so you get this menu. There's a little record button right there that you can just press. So right now it's recording. If I press this, it'll count down three, two, one, and now you're recording your screen, okay? So once it's recording the screen, I'm gonna flip to the camera. And this is what I want you guys to see. So let me go ahead and just make sure my lenses are clean because I am a slob. I'm, I'm not a slob, that's just me. I'm very clean, I like to be clean. So I'm on the wide angle lens right now. If I bring the phone right down to this, what is this? Sketch pad, it's a sketch pad. That was a very complicated word, I had a hard time with that. You can see all you're really seeing right now is just some of the lines that I've drawn, right? But if I rotate the phone and bring it down, now you can actually see all the lines leading directly into the camera. So this is what rotating the phone does, is if I have a wall, rather than shooting kind of like this where I don't see much of that wall, I can rotate and get more of a foreground introduced into the shot. So we're gonna use this compositionally whenever we wanna bring the lens closer to something. I just don't want you to be confused by what's the magic behind rotate. There's no magic there. It's just on a regular camera, like on a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, the lens is right in the middle of the camera. Here, the lenses are small and they're off to the side. And that means the positioning of them makes a really big difference in terms of what the camera and what the lenses are actually seeing. That's the importance of getting it right in camera. We don't have as much flexibility in post-production, so we really want things to come out of the camera looking as good as possible. Okay, now let's talk about some of the accessories that we're gonna use. Now, again, in the course I mentioned quite a bit, you might already have an ND filter. Why would I mention that? Well, because a lot of the people watching this course are photographers that are used to using a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, and they just want to get more creative with their phone. They want to see what the capabilities are. So if you've been a photographer for a while, you probably already have one of these. If this is your first course with us, you probably don't. This is an ND filter. Its sole purpose is to cut down the amount of light that goes into a lens. This is generally gonna be done for more advanced purposes. So when you get to a DSLR or a mirrorless, we're doing this so that we can do kind of special effects and different things. But when it comes to fun phone photography special effects, this is a handy dandy tool because it's a perfect thing that you can create reflections off of. So that's what I'm saying is if you already have one of these, then fantastic, use an ND filter. I carry this around with me all the time. I'm gonna give you another option in case you don't because if you're getting it solely for the special effects purposes, which I'm about to show you, I'm screen capturing again, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you by rotating the phone over, I can create a reflection of really anything I want. So I can cut off anything that I don't wanna see, and I can create a reflection with it. So you'll see us doing this quite a bit. If you don't have the ND filter and you don't intend on going into more advanced photography, don't, don't waste your money on one of these. Instead, we're almost always hanging out with friends, right? Or you might have an older phone with you. So either way, grab your friend's phone. Mikey, can I grab your phone? You're gonna have to bring it in. I can't reach very far. There we go. Okay, so grab your friend's phone because you know, we like to go out together. We like to have a good time together. Might as well make your friend's phone useful. So make sure it's off and you can bring this to the lens the exact same way. So right now it's turned on, which is why you see something. But you can do the exact same thing with this and create your reflection with just another person's phone. The only benefit of the ND filter is it's a little bit larger, so you get a little more surface area. I think it's a little easier to do the reflection thing with. So now let's go ahead and talk about the tripod. So in certain instances, you will see me using a tripod. In each instance, I'm gonna tell you whether I'm using the tripod just to make the footage that you guys are looking at easier to see, so less shaky, versus whether you actually need a tripod for the image itself. There's only a few instances where you're gonna need a tripod. If, again, you are a photographer and you want to invest in a good tripod, I'm using the Peak Design Travel Tripod. Now this is the aluminum variant, it also comes in a carbon fiber variant, 
But the nice thing about this is not only do you put your main camera, your DSLR or mirrorless up here, well at the very bottom right here is a little phone mount. So all you gotta do is pop this thing off and from the inside you can pull out a little mount where you can mount your phone directly to the tripod. It's kind of a cool handy dandy feature that I like a lot. But that being said, this is a rather expensive tripod. And once again, if you're not planning to go deep into photography, I wouldn't spend, I think the 300 or so bucks to get this guy. If you are a travel photographer, if you want something light and, and good quality, then by all means, this is a fantastic option. But if you're just using your phone, then hop onto Amazon, type in like iPhone stand or iPhone tripod. There's plenty between 20 to like 40, $50 that will do a great job. And they're not necessarily gonna last you years and they're not gonna be designed for anything other than just a phone, but it's gonna be something that is far more affordable out the gate. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you did, I'd love for you to check out Creative Photography 101. The link's down in the description of the video. And this is our first course that is designed and priced for consumers. It's designed to teach you where to begin in photography, and specifically how to shoot pro images with nothing but the camera that you already have, your phone. In the meantime, please like the video, comment below if there's anything else that you guys would like to learn, and I'll see you all back here same time next week. And turn on notifications because uh, YouTube thinks that even if you subscribe, you don't want to be notified. It doesn't make any sense to me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.